Now, how did you get into rap music? I got into rap, like, fundamentally, you know. Um, my mom had, like, a pretty big CD collection, and uh, I just discovered it when I was, like, in, in, like, fifth grade, fifth, fourth grade. No, I think earlier. I'm not, I'm not too sure when. I'm, I'm very bad with dates. Um, but around then, mm, we can assume. Yeah, so, I mean, like, I was, like, bumping, like, current shit at the time, like, Lil Flip, you know, um, and, like, all that stuff. T.I. Um, but like I got into a collection that then I started from like Naughty by Nature, Black Sheep, you know, all the, like the Jungle Brothers and stuff like that. And then I just got into like everything from like Eric B. Rock Him and slowly progressing up, you know, um, to Busta Rhymes and et cetera, et cetera. And then like also like wherever I lived, you know, um, like living in Houston, I got introduced to like Zero, you know, Low Kiki and, and like all those guys, and then like when, when I was living in Georgia, um, you know, I, th I think back when I was living here, B103 couldn't stop playing DJ Yola, I ain't gonna let up, you know, and that was literally on the radio all the time. So I was I was here during during like that era, and like you know I was like Jeezy, Wayne, um, a lot of people. You have a lot of uh, variety there. Mm -hmm. um, as far as musical influences or anybody that's inspired you, uh, do any of those come to mind? Yeah, um, Zero for sure, Lil Flip for sure, T.I. for sure. I was a very big Ludacris fan, you know. Um, I was super, super into DTP growing up. <laughs> um, Kanye, Pharrell, you know. Drake, obviously. Yeah, Jay-Z, Wayne. How many years would you say you've been perfecting your craft for? I've been rapping since I was 15, but I've been perfecting it the past four years. Do you remember your first rap or what you were rapping about back then? The first rap I wrote to was to Lil Flip, this is the way we ball. And I forgot the rap, but I knew <laughs> I knew it was definitely whack. But then but then that happened, but that was just like me in like detention. But then I when I first sat down to write like to write like a real rap, I wrote another rap to uh Microphone Fiend. So those two. And I don't remember either of them. <clears throat> now, when it comes to the music industry, what bothers you the most about it at this point? What's your biggest pet peeve with it if you have one? I mean, I don't really have that many pet peeves. I really just keep to myself, you know, so all the industry bullshit that people, like, go through, you know, I, I, it doesn't really faze me, you know. I just, I literally just record, do shows, play video games, you know. I party and shit, but, like, I just, like, keep to myself, you know. But, you know, there's obviously, like, shit that happens, you know, when you do songs with other people or, like, you, you, like, have a beat and then the beat gets taken by somebody bigger, you know, it's, like, blah, 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 like, that kind of shit. That's the only shit that annoys me because then it's, like, yeah, it's such a good song that you can't really use anymore. And it's, like, you can redo the beat, but it's never going to be the same beat, you know, so that's whatever. I was just going to ask you that. I was going to ask you, has there been any beat that you received that you passed on that became a bigger song for somebody else? There hasn't been a beat that I see that I passed on that became a bigger song for somebody else, no. Other instances, yes, but not in that situation. Because I, I mostly work with my producer back home, Lance, you know, and he and he, he and I have been working together since I was 16. But um, obviously I, I, like, branch out and work with, like, other people, you know, but for the most part, like, that's, like, the core of, like, where I work at right now. Top three things you need in the studio. Cigarettes. What Which kind? is very bad. You know, if I do have something for the kids, I, w I will tell them, <laughs> stop smoking cigarettes. Don't smoke cigarettes. What kind do you smoke, though? Belmonts only, you know. Um, Two more. Cigarettes. Hennessy. But not to get drunk or anything, you know, just, you know, relax the nerves, you know what I'm saying? I, I don't really like getting drunk during my sessions here or, like, you know, any of that stuff. Um, Hennessy and... One more. Candles. What kind? Vanilla scented candles. Yeah. How many? How many have to be in the studio? Are you the kind of you, you need them all over around the place, or just one in the center? And, you know? I need I need at least like fifteen. Yeah, like, but like the motherboard, the lounge area, and in the booth especially, you know. 
Now, what's the realest song you ever wrote so far in your whole catalog of music? The real song I ever wrote in my, um, in my whole catalog, I must say, probably, there's a couple. The outro for my last project, Hotel Paranoia, Save Me For Myself, you know, um, got pretty deep on that. Also, the outro for my first project, Marty in Paradise, See You In Hell. Yeah. What were those records about? This life, you know, those, those are just like the recaps of everything going on in my life at those particular times. And um, yeah, I, I just find myself like with those kind of records, things just flow so, so smoothly because everything's just real, you know? And, it, and it's, it's like the, for me, the easiest, the easiest songs to write. Risk first reward, what's the biggest risk you took for your music career so far? Not going to not going to school and going back to the city without my mom really knowing. So, proudest accomplishment so far in your music career? Getting acknowledged by Lil Wayne. Mm. What's the biggest misconception of you? I'm not sure. I'm not really sure. Craziest rumor you heard about yourself? I really... <laughs> That's a good thing, right? I'm, I'm drawing blanks. Do you care what people think of you? Never. What are your keys to success? Patience. Um, observe at all times. Don't get too ahead of yourself. If shit goes bad, give yourself a little 15-minute pity party, and that's it. Move on to the next. 